Roanora Zoro has a deep, dark, hidden secret that no one has seemed to notice. Inside Zoro lays a dormant demon like something you'd see out of Naruto. Not only does this give us clues about what the will of D is, but it also plays into the future of Zoro. If you think about it, this panel right here holds way more information than you'd expect. In classic Oda fashion, he has a small panel hidden earlier on in the story that foreshadows something huge hundreds of chapters later. And every single One Piece reader missed it, leading to why Zoro has a literal demon inside to him. Like when CP9 was talking about the effects of eating two devil fruits, they said it was like two demons fighting within you. He may have been slightly mistaken, but today you'll learn why Zoro is a little possessed and demonic. But before we jump into it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss the best One Piece theory videos on YouTube. To get into this whole mess with Zoro and a demon, we first have to talk about the nature of Zoro not only as a character, but as a combatant. So throughout the story, we see Zoro as a hockey man, you know, a three sword style user, never having having a devil fruit, never having technology, basically some just really good swords, some really good hockey, and some hard training. Like if you look at Zoro's pre-time skip or post-time skip, either one, his base stats are incredibly high, high durability, high speed, all of that, even before he was trained by Mihawk. Like it seems like there's something within him that makes him very strong and special, besides just like the whole, oh, I work hard, I train hard, Rock Lee type shit. Now, I do think Mihawk is going to be a special key within Zoro where he has something laying dormant within him that Mihawk recognizes and helps bring the best of. Now, when we're talking about Zoro's whole arsenal and him as a combatant, there's one key thing we cannot forget about. Ashra. This seems to be some kind of three-headed demon that appears in other religions, but in One Piece, it seems to be some kind of power, some kind of ability that Zoro uses in very pivotal moments. The first time Zoro ever used it was against CP9 member Kaku at Eni's lobby. It was a very crucial moment moment for Zoro to use Ashra in order to defeat Kaku. And this is prevalent throughout the story. Zoro is using Ashra at very crucial moments. And like I was saying a second ago, Ashras do appear in different theologies and religions, and it's mostly seen as some kind of demon, some kind of enemy of the gods, some kind of death god. Now I want to focus on the Hinduism version of Ashra specifically, and I'll explain why later. In Hinduism, it is said that the Ashras are the enemies of the gods. And to be more specific, the gods of Hinduism are called Devas. So in basic terms, it's like there's two different factions. You have the gods, which are devas, and then you have the demons, the kind of enemies of the gods, known as ashras. And seeing how Oda used the phrase ashra specifically in One Piece, I'm led to believe there will be some kind of deva introduced at some point in the story. Now we can actually deduce that Oda is inspired from ashras in Hinduism because Monkey D. Luffy is confirmed to be based off Hanumanji. We learned that from Road to Laugh Sale Volume 4, where Oda's own author notes calls Luffy Monkey God Hanuman. And just to give a quick description, of Hanumanji, he was basically the monkey god of Hinduism who was the son of the Lord of the Winds known as Vayu. So basically Hanumanji aka Luffy is a deva or what we would call a god. And like I was saying earlier, the Ashras are the enemies of the gods. Now this leads me to believe that the D clan in One Piece stands for deva, but this video is not about that. If you're very curious on that subject in that video, I go super in depth into it. Check the video at the top right of the screen. Now refocusing back on Ashra, I find it very interesting how Zoro has this ability without some kind of devil fruit technology or some kind of hacks ability like it was never even explained why he has this demon within him like at least we can explain luffy's character and his powers because of the sun god nika devil fruit or nami we can explain her powers with thunder clouds mirages all that kind of stuff because of her staff or even sanji where we got information about germa the vin smokes we can explain why sanji is the way he is but yet zoro being this complete monster with a demon inside of him oh we're just supposed to accept that for no reason at all and like what i was saying earlier Earlier, what makes matters worse is Zoro is always using this during crucial moments. Like this isn't just some random ability. Now the most peculiar detail about Zoro and Ashra is one small panel that everyone missed. Chapter 635, Fishman Island. While Zoro was fighting fodder, one of the characters in the background says something very interesting about Zoro. He asked, what was that huge slash? It was like the Grim Reaper scythe or... Now to the average reader, this seems like a random panel. Zoro uses swords, he uses blades, he could be seen as a grim reaper maybe metaphorically who cares about this panel it's just random fodder but this is the trick that Oda likes to do multiple times throughout the story he will have a character say something really peculiar and kind of cut off the conversation one example of this is actually during punk hazard
Blizzard. At the beginning of the arc, we had no idea that half the island was frozen and we thought it was completely filled with fire and magma. And that was when Nami says, oh, I think I see some frozen clouds. I see some cold clouds on the other side. Then the conversation gets cut off and we go back to the island. It's classic Oda pattern that I've caught on to and probably a lot of other people as well. So when this random fishman says that he sees a Grim Reaper with a scythe, it does not leave my radar. Especially when we consider something that happens later on in the story. Quick little shout out to my Discord server, discord.gg slash 333vil, where I'm always posting hot takes, fresh new theories, and sneak peeks to videos. If you're too lazy to type in this very easy URL, there's a link in the description. Join today. Chapter 1038, Wano Kuni. Zoro was just about finished with his long drawn out fight with King, the last Lunarian, when he then stumbles across what is possibly the most puzzling panel of Onigashima, a literal Grim Reaper with a scythe drawn in the air. Now, seeing how this is the same exact depiction as what the fishman said earlier in the story, I believe these two different items are connected. Item number one is the dialogue from the fishman, and item number two is the vision Zoro had. If we closely analyze item number one, we can see it was some type of an attack from Zoro. Given the whole context of the conversation, especially since he was just fighting during that page, during that chapter, it seems like this was something innately with Zoro. Now the key thing here is at this time in the story during Fishman Island, Zoro did not yet have Enma. That happened during much later in the story during chapter 953. So we can deduce that this Grand Reaper with a scythe must be something within Zoro and not something with swords. Especially when you consider how Ashra is like a three-headed demon that gives Zoro three different heads, it seems like there's something within Zoro, not some type of devil fruit or some kind of special hacks ability in one of his swords. And now this is where we introduce item number three, Ashra. Since item number one seems to imply that Zoro used some form of a Grim Reaper, then item number two shows that Grim Reaper manifested into something physical, and item number three is a demon we know Zoro uses, they must all be connected. It is my sincere belief that Roanora Zoro has a literal demon inside of him that was finally released. Now I personally don't want to narrow this demon down to an Ashra from Hinduism or a Grim Reaper from Greek theology. Considering how they're both depicted as like demons, enemies of the gods, they kind of go under the same umbrella, but they're not quite the same exact thing. So I hypothesize there's some type of demon in the One Piece world that lays dormant in Zoro, and it manifests itself within multiple different ways, such as Ashra, a Grim Reaper, and what else the future of the story holds. And this is why it reminds me of Naruto. If you ever watched Naruto, basically the main character had a demon sealed inside of him because of his father, and this was a very crucial part of the story. Naruto was able to utilize this demon, it made him stronger, he had all sorts of attacks. I believe this is the same case for Zoro. And it would even make sense if this was like some form of nod to Naruto. It is a commonly known fact that the author of One Piece, Oda, is friends with the author of Naruto, Kishimoto. They were like best friends, they shouted each other out through their own manga multiple times. These two were clicked up. Now maybe during chapter 1038 when we first saw the Grim Reaper, maybe that wasn't even the first time Zoro saw it. Maybe Zoro has been using this Grim Reaper and possibly through the time skip with Mihawk and this is how Zoro got the cut along his eye. Maybe Zoro had battles with this Grim Reaper one on one and you know Zoro was just never able to defeat him or maybe he just doesn't die and this plays a large role into Zoro's character. And with Mihawk kind of observing Zoro seeing how he has a demon within him and he's kind of 1v1ing this demon possibly, maybe this had Mihawk get connected to Zoro even further. I don't think demons being sealed into people in One Piece is going to be very common so I'd imagine this is something that would shock Mihawk and kind of make Mihawk proud or even kind of jealous of Zoro in a way. Like who knows, maybe Zoro's own demon will stand behind him kind of like how Sasuke from Naruto had Susano, and when Sasuke fought his brother Itachi with a demon behind him, maybe Mihawk will have something like that. Zoro and Mihawk will be like Sasuke versus Itachi. Who knows if Oda will go that direction. Now I actually suspect that there's multiple Ashras in One Piece and let me explain. In Hinduism, Hanumanji once had a great battle with an Ashra named Three Siddhas. He's a three-headed demon aka Ashra that has three different heads serving three different functions. One is for eating and drinking, one is for observing its surroundings, and the last one is for reading the four Vedas. And to clarify, the four Vedas in Hinduism are secret ancient texts detailing events and such. Perhaps Luffy is based on Hanumanji, making Blackbeard based on Three Siddhas. And since Three Siddhas is an Ashra, and Zoro has an Ashra attack or demon within him, Zoro and Blackbeard will share some type of similarity. Maybe both of them have demons sealed within them, or they have the same upbringing. If you're curious on that topic with Blackbeard, Blackbeard being based on Three Siddhas, I go super in detail with it. Check the video at the top right of the screen. And also taking a look at Zoro's personality, it makes a lot of sense why he has an Ashra within him. As I said earlier, Ashras are the enemies of the gods. Correlating this with One Piece makes sense because the gods
gods of the One Piece world are the Celestial Dragons, and every single interaction Zoro has had with them has been from a heroic standpoint, with Zoro even trying to kill one of the Celestial Dragons. So again, it makes a lot of sense why Zoro would be correlated with an Ashra, or maybe he's partly controlled or maybe slightly possessed by an Ashra. Like, I suspect there's something in Zoro's past with his parents and where he actually came from that answers why he has this demon within him. Like, Oda could tie together the Grim Reaper, the Ashra, Zoro's past all together in like one big arc or one big moment. Now, if you're curious who Zoro's parents are and what his origin is, check out this video to my right. I go super in depth. I even made a timeline for that video. Go check it out, the origins of Zoro. But thank you guys so much for watching. It's a Demon King. I'm signing out.